Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's January 19th. These are your headlines. First up, we're hearing about some good open water pike fishing this week. Also, Rhode Island stocked 10 ponds with Sebago salmon, rainbow trout, and new to the ocean state lake trout this week. And we also have the Hartford Boat Show this weekend at Mohegan Sun. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So before we begin, we've just got a couple news items to cover. The first one is the Hartford Boat Show this weekend at Mohegan Sun. It runs from today, Thursday, through Sunday, and um, it's at Mohegan Sun. And they've got lots of activities going on. They've got family-friendly outdoor activities. They've got fishing tackle manufacturers. They've got magazines like us. They've got uh, all different kinds of boats that you can check out there. And, of course, we'll be renewing subscriptions. So you can come on by and talk fishing with us. Uh, you can renew your subscription. We have great prizes, or great giveaways, I should call them, this year for renewals. We have those BKK hooks in various types. We've got the Lone Diablos. We've got some circle hooks. We've got some live bait hooks. And those packs of hooks, you know, they cost about 10 bucks a piece. So you're taking $10 right off the top of your uh, $29.95 subscription fee. So when you think about that, I mean, you're going from $29.95 to $19.95 right off the top. And that's for 12 issues sent to your house plus... 26 issues sent to your email box during the regular season or during the fishing season. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend at fishing and you know with that giveaway you're taking another 10 bucks off the top. So come on by and visit us there. Next up of course is the stocking in Rhode Island where we're for the first time ever we're seeing lake trout in Rhode Island waters so that's pretty exciting. Also got those Sebago salmon and some rainbow trout. Um, I'll put a link in the notes down below so you guys can check out all the different ponds where these things were stocked. Um, I'm not going to run through each one off the top of my head here, but um, it's exciting. And uh, if you remember a few months ago, they, when they stocked the uh, Sebago salmon the first time, uh, I got into a few and had some good insights on how to catch them, but I'll cover that more in the Rhode Island portion of the report, so stay tuned for that. Last up, of course, is the giveaway, which is ongoing. This one's going to end on March 1st. Got a few... Uh, entries this week, but nothing that's challenging that top photo that I got last week. So uh, get those photos into me, and remember the only stipulations are that it's a recent catch and that it shows you in the photo. Uh, so send them to me at danderson@thefisherman.com or text them to me at the number on the screen. And if you're going to email them, just please put giveaway or contest in the email subject line so that I can sort them out easily and find them and get you guys entered into the contest. And uh, you know, right around March 1st, we'll pick a new winner, and then we'll probably start another one. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. As far as my reports go, the things that I'm hearing, there's really only two avenues that seems like most anglers are traveling right now in Massachusetts. They're either fishing for trout or they're fishing for largemouth bass. Now, I'm not saying there aren't guys fishing for smallies and getting them, because I'm certain that there are, or that there aren't guys out there fishing for pike and getting them, because I'm certain that there are, but I'm not getting many reports or any reports uh, on those species. Mostly what I'm hearing, good bass fishing in the bog ponds from Plymouth all the way out to the Cape. In fact, if I had to like draw a line in Massachusetts on where you guys should be fishing, I'd start in New Bedford, I'd cut right across the situate, and I'd just fish east of that line. That's where most of my reports are coming from. That's where the best fishing seems to be. There are a few outliers coming in from the uh, from more inland spots, but you know, I talked to Roy today. He's not going to do a video because he said the fishing's been really inconsistent in inland. Um, so, you know, that's the way. Uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles right now. The, the fishing is just better out toward the Cape. And uh, the bass fishing, again, in those bog ponds has been really good. Those bog ponds tend to be shallower. The fish are a little easier to target because they're not diving off into really deep water. Uh, jerk baits have been getting it done. Jigs have been getting it done. And uh, targeting structure has been a really good way to get them. On the other hand, we've got trout, which is still popping off really good, whether you're fishing in the Plymouth ponds or out in Carver or out on the Cape itself. Um, hearing good reports from Mary's Pond, Little Pond, Long Pond, Peter's Pond, Hamblin Pond, and then all throughout Nickerson State Park. That night bite for brown trout continues, you know, just fishing live bait without a float or without a weight, just tossing it out there and letting it swim around in the dark. Good way to get a big brown trout. During the day, the, the species spread is a little more diverse. You can fish live bait, you can fish lures, you're going to catch rainbows, you're going to catch tigers, you're going to catch uh, brook trout, you're going to catch brown trout. 
and uh, you know you got a shot at getting some bass and there's also been some big pickle reported so there's a lot of stuff going on in those cape ponds um, and the only other thing that you can really fish for is holdover striped bass but all, you know, everyone's kind of indicating that it's just been slower this year. The holdover bite in Massachusetts and Rhode Island for that matter has been a lot slower uh, than what we typically expect uh, so hard to figure out why that might be but it's just one of those facts of life that we're going to have to live with. Um, once again, we're not going to talk to Roy this week. I know he's been, uh, you know, he's been micro fishing through the ice with a tiny little tip up he made, and uh, you know it's, that falls into the category of only Roy Leva. Um, you know, guy sits down and builds himself a functioning tip up that could fit in the palm of your hand, and then he's drilling holes in the ice with a three-quarter inch spade bit in his battery drill, and you know catching these tiny little fish. So. Um, but other than that, he said things have been pretty slow out his way, so um, that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Over in Rhode Island, uh, the one like really exciting thing that we have to talk about is the trout stocking. And Rhode Island's just really keeping their foot on the gas this year. They're stocking rainbows this week, they're stocking Sebago salmon this week, and they're stocking lake trout this week. Uh, most of the salmon and rainbows have already been put in, and guys are already starting to catch those. I've seen a few reports come through uh, of the salmon. And the lake trout were put in over the last eh, 24 to 48 hours. Um, you can, I'll put a link in the uh, show notes here so you can click over to the news release to learn where all these fish were stocked. They did a pretty good job spreading it out in the state, so you're probably within striking distance. Uh, no matter where you live in the ocean state, you got a good shot at uh, finding these fish. And, um, you know, if you remember a few weeks ago or a few months ago when they put the first Sebago salmon in, uh, I went out and prospected around a little bit. And the thing that I found is that those fish want fast-moving baits. Um, and I'm going to have to believe that they still want that. So I was getting them on a Ronzi, a little white Ronzi, just tossing it out there and reeling it in pretty fast, just kind of snappily jigging it along the surface. And that's what was working. Uh, they wanted that faster-moving bait. They wanted something that stood out. I was using bright white. Um, and, you know, that's... That's often the key with these stocked fish. They don't have any instincts, you know, so you're just trying to get their attention. Um, so that's what I would try, something like that or like a flashy tin, something that you can fish pretty quickly along near the surface, and I think you're going to get into them. Uh, for the lake trout, I've never fished for stocked lake trout. I've done a lot of lake trout fishing in my life, and I would have to guess, just based on what I know about lake trout, that those fish are going to stay a little deeper. So I would probably resort or revert to a technique that I used a lot in Wachusa back in the day, and that is just to throw something like a crocodile or a cast master, just get it out there as far as you can, let it settle all the way to the bottom, and then just snap it off the bottom and just pick it up and let it flutter back down. Snap it up, let it flutter back down, and um, just got to kind of keep that line a little bit tight to feel for that hit on the drop because that's when they usually grab it. But it's a very effective way to get wild lake trout, so i got to believe that... Um, it's going to catch some of these stockies as well. So good luck with that. And if you do get into them, I'd love to hear about it. Please send me pictures at theanderson at thefisherman.com. Uh, really interested to see how big these lake trout are too because there was no indications on that on any of the uh, news releases that I read. So uh, get those into me. I'd be really interested to hear how you guys did. Other thing, of course, is the cod fishing out around Cox's Ledge. That is still going on when we have good weather. I'm sure they're out there today. It's beautiful out here today. Um, but the bite has not been crazy, it's just been solid. Uh, they're doing a lot of moving around, they're hitting different ledges, different wrecks, and they're picking fish off of all of them. Uh, by the end of the day, they're putting together a decent catch, and um, you know, and, and everybody seems to be coming home with enough meat to keep them smiling, so uh, that's one option for you. The other thing, of course, is the holdover striper fishing, which has been just so-so. Um, seems like you know we had that little flurry of activity right before that first cold snap, when things seemed to be coming together, and now, it's kind of proven to be an off year for holdover stripers throughout most of Rhode Island. Um, the guys, you know, guys are catching them, and the guys that are, are putting in a lot of time, and they're hitting a lot of different bodies of water. So, um, you know, there's no easy way right now. You're just going to have to put in the time. You have to bounce around a little bit, and if you do, you're probably going to find fish. And the only other thing that I'm hearing about is just some guys fishing for bass, uh, you know, freshwater bass in some of the ponds. Um, everybody I talk to say that they're the only guys out there doing it, throwing jerk baits, throwing jigs. They're finding some decent action. And I also got this shot from John Tawa of a uh, big pike that he caught in an S waiver last week that was intended for largemouth. Uh, pike came out of nowhere and surprised the heck out of him. But uh, great photo, great fish, and uh, that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. 
And as we move over into Connecticut, Connecticut's kind of a two avenue uh, fishery right now as well. We've got trout in the rivers and ponds, and then we've got uh, striped bass in the tidal rivers. And I'm gonna start with trout. Trout fishing has been very, very good. Connecticut always does an awesome job stocking and they've kept everybody happy. The Farmington has definitely been the uh, hot zone, but the Salmon River's kind of holding down second place and they're you know, nipping at their heels. Very good fishing at both of those places. But any one of the TMAs, especially if you go on the deep website and just look for the ones that were stocked in the fall, you've got a really good shot at finding some fish. There's, you know, the stocking has been great and results have been really good across the state from all the way out east to the you know Norwalk River and the Naugatuck and the Saugatuck, all those places are putting out fish right now. And they also did a little bit more salmon stocking in both the Chetucket and the Naugatuck, and we have seen another increase in salmon catches this week. So uh, whether you want to catch salmon or you want to catch trout in the rivers of Connecticut, you've got a really good shot at that right now. Uh, for a little deeper dive on that, let's toss it over now to Rowan Lytle. So we're slipping into some colder weather here towards the end of the week, it looks, but uh, for mid-January, it's still awfully mild, and the Connecticut River coves are all pretty much fully open. There's not really any ice, so to speak, at all. Um, there's good pan fishing to be had. you got to put a small boat in. Um, look, for, look for fish on your finder in depths from 8 to 15 feet. Um, yellow perch and white perch are going to be the, uh, the most accessible. Um, there's some pike to be had as well, but uh, yeah, open water fishing in January. I honestly do hope we get some safe ice eventually, so I'll be rooting for a cold spell in February. But for the time being, you know, get out there and, and fish in this pretty mild winter weather. It's nice and pleasant out there. Good luck. Up inside the Connecticut River, you know, the ice fishermen are starting to get antsy, and a few of them have you know, taking matters into their own hands. They're not gonna, they don't have any safe ice right, right now like they typically would. So they're, uh, you know, they're grabbing the rod and they're fishing open water. They're going to the same places where they typically would be drilling holes and they're fishing from shore, they're fishing from little tin boats and they're finding some fish. Uh, some guys are doing it with big jerk baits, some guys are doing it slow rolling big spinner baits and some guys are doing it just fishing big live uh, golden shiners out there under a bobber. And uh, you know, we've seen a couple of nice fish come in couple of nice shots come in. Um, one of them was from Dan Southwick. He had a solid uh, solid pike from one of the coves last week and then a little while later he texted me back with a big largemouth. So no matter where this guy goes he can't seem to get away from the big largies. Must be nice to be that lucky. But uh, that's a joke. He's not lucky. That, he's, uh, that, he's a beast. But uh, <clears throat> no, it must be great to just be able to run into big bass wherever he goes. Uh, so that's that's been something that's been going on in the Connecticut River. There's also a lot of perch up there, a lot of big pickerel up there. So the fishery in the Connecticut River is a great fishery, and it's still going on, um, and it's going to carry on through the whole winter. Um, it's I think it's one of the best winter fisheries we have here in New England. Uh, you're also going to run into a few striped bass in some of those coves, but uh, those seem to be few and far between right now. If you want striped bass, you pretty much got to head all the way west to go to the Housatonic. Uh, the fish are in the northern end of the river right now from about the Sportsplex or even Sunnyside North. Uh, the daytime guys are putting up numbers and the nighttime guys are catching size with some bigger baits. Either way, you're going to be fishing soft plastics on lead heads during the daytime. Right now, the Alby Snacks has been the killer. Uh, it's either going to be white or amber, amber for the color. Those are the two that are really getting it done. At night, you've got a little bit more of a diverse set of choices, but you know, on the on average, guys are fishing bigger baits, so six to nine inch baits seem to be getting it done. Some guys are even going up as high as 13, uh, fishing light jig heads and just letting them drift through the tide, and they're getting some really nice fish. Uh, for a little more on that and some other things that are going on out in the western end of the state, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. Not much has changed since the past week. The herring fishing still remains slow. I'm hearing guys getting them here and there. Places to try is uh, Nog Harbor. I've heard a couple call it down in the Stanford area and Greenwich and then South Benton and Fairfield. You know, anglers are hitting the Housatonic pretty hard. There's, you know, there's a lot of bass. Everybody knows that. They're getting them on the boat and from shore. Guys are throwing umbrella rigs from uh, the boat, Albi snacks, everybody's favorite soft plastic, Lunker City, paddle tails, you name it. Always try to scale down on tackle, like I said last week. You know, lighter fluorocarbon leaders, the lightest jig head you can go so your presentation looks natural, especially when they start getting lockjaw. You want to call like, a, we call it a swing bite. You just want to be really light where you're just feeling bottom and then it gets swept with the current. 
Uh, looking ahead, I mean, I would definitely fish more nighttime for the bigger fish. Still on the river, you know, ups your offerings with some like seven to nine inch sluggos, that'd be good. And then our local trout streams are still fishing good. So using, you know, spinner baits, small jigs, all working well. And then we've had anglers going up to the noggy fishing for the salmon. Remember, you got to use a free swinging hook on your uh, lures for your offerings for the salmon. Thanks and good luck. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully you're going to find them useful. And we've got a lot of options right now, even though it's January. It's been a very mild January. We've got a lot of open water and a lot of fish are being caught. So get out there and make it happen and get those photos into me. Enter the contest. You never know you might win. Um, and don't forget to come and visit us this weekend at the Mohican Sun. We'll be, uh, I'll be there Saturday and Sunday if you want to stop and talk surf fishing or any kind of fishing. Um, you know, I'm always up for a conversation. So stop on by, renew your subscription, get the get the giveaways and uh, you know we'll talk a little bit and uh, last but not least just if you're a if you're not a subscriber to the fisherman I highly recommend you head over to the website and check out what we got going on over there we have enough free stuff there for you to get a full flavor of what we offer and uh, it's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing so head on over there check us out appreciate you guys for watching and we'll see you next week